Well, as you know, in the, in the last few days we've had an incident involving a, um, a person who was employed as a deputy sheriff, and uh, we're, we now are looking uh, for him. And uh, I'm sure you have questions. We also uh, have the video of uh, how he escaped, and we have the video of him after he got outside, and we're going to provide those to you uh, today. So uh, if you have questions about what occurred, uh, feel free to ask. You want to just walk us back and kind of walk us through how well, this all started? Uh, initially, uh, the first call uh, when he was arrested, uh, he uh, allegedly pointed a gun at, uh, at some young girls, and a deputy arrived and ultimately made an arrest, found him to be under the influence of methamphetamine, and found uh, firearms, several, uh, in his vehicle. What was he saying to those girls? It, it was uh, nonsensical. He uh, he asked them a question. They didn't, and then he told me he didn't believe their answer, and uh, so it really. Uh, and then he went next door when the de first deputy arrived, and uh, uh, when he saw the deputy, he tried to uh, he ran to his car, which was running, and the deputy then detained him. Um, after that, he was uh, well. He was booked into the jail, and he uh, was released on bail. Um, and then uh, a couple days after that, we received a, uh, a call to check the welfare of uh, Mr. Tucker. Um, and uh, we were able to locate him at a park in, uh, in northwest Bakersfield, where uh, the deputies found him, again, to be under the influence of methamphetamine and possessing methamphetamine and several firearms and some destructive uh, uh, devices. And when I say devices, he had uh, some debt cord and, and things that, it, that you should not have. Uh, and it was a um, uh, military grade, so um, it was. It, this is a dangerous person that we're looking for, and uh, we have gone all out, pulled all the stops. We're every, all of our resources are focused on getting Mr. Tucker back in custody. Can you tell us his background here with the sheriff's office? Well, I think he, I think he's been here a, a, a right around 19 years. Um, the last uh, couple of years, he's been uh, on and off uh, for uh, separate. For, on leaves. The last one was uh, uh, about a year where he was off uh, receiving, uh, he was not, wasn't on paid status from, uh, as a deputy, but he was receiving uh, money uh, while he was off for the past year. Is he still receiving that money currently? Uh, I, I'm assuming so. I really don't know. Um, could you talk about uh, what what departments he worked in? I know you said he had some destructive devices. Was he part he, of the he, he was not part of the bomb squad. He was on, on patrol. Why is he still considered a sheriff? Then? Well, if, if you know California law, uh, it takes a lengthy period of time to uh, uh, take disciplinary action against someone. Uh, the process is, uh, right now, it's as fast as, as legally we can do uh, to try and um, get to the end of this case, and as far as the administrative portion of it. So if it was up to you, that, that question wouldn't be an issue, right? Uh, there would be no question. Chef, walk me back here. You said that you guys had a second call after you'd been released on bond. What did that friend tell you about him? Why, or if it was a friend, I, I think that's what Ray had said. What did that friend tell you about him? And well, it was a retired sheriff's deputy that, uh, that he was acquainted with who had received uh, some information that uh, Mr. Tucker had been sending some texts that were um, that with suicidal comments, and he was very concerned about his safety. How did you find him at San Lorenzo Park then? Well, we have investigative tools and, and we have informants and we have all kinds of mechanisms to, to find people and we, we're, that's exactly what we're doing now. Uh, debt cord, you're talking about detonation cord, was yes. that something you would use to like light a fuse? It's a fuse. It's, it's, uh, it can be explosive in the right circumstances. So that actual fuse I'm not an expert on debt cord and, and I don't want to profess to you that I am. Uh, so I'll have to leave it at that, and you can do some research. It's not just the fuse, though. That's the kind of stuff that ISIS was using when they were wrapping people in it. And actually, ex the, the I don't know what cord. ISIS was using. Okay, but that's the cord itself actually explodes, right? Yes. Okay. Sheriff, what was found, if, if anything, in the storage facility that was searched yesterday in connection with Mr. Tucker? Well, uh, I have not seen the the uh, results of the search, but I do know that uh, they found uh, uh, more contraband and and. Uh, uh, you'll, you'll, when you see the search warrant returns, you'll all know exactly what was located. Contraband? We're talking guns, explosives. Uh, I don't. I have not seen the the, the list. Um, have, have any other residences or storage units been searched since then? 
We, uh, we are in the middle of an investigation, and we are not leaving un any stone unturned. Do we know what he was doing at the park before he was arrested? Or I know you, no. can't, you can't say much about how, what, how you tracked him there, but do we know what he was doing? There? No, I do not. Is it common for um, that someone in law enforcement to own this many uh, guns or weapons or firearms, whatever it may be? Um, I think it. I think it is common that uh, police officers tend to, including me, include uh, like guns and and certain guns, firearms. Uh, we we buy uh, so that we can have uh, as collectors or what, for whatever reason. But it, it's not uncommon for a, a police officer to have uh, eight or ten guns. Uh, in this case, well. I don't know that number yet, so I don't know if it, it's going to be uh, unreasonable or uncommon. Uh, I simply don't know. We're, we're doing the research now. You can't just call the state and say how many guns is, are registered. There's a process. Did he use them recreationally? I'm sorry? Did he use them recreationally? Like, was he a hunter or a guy who goes out shooting? I suspect probably so, but I don't, I don't really know. Do we know if all of these guns were legally owned by him? I don't have any information that any of them are illegal, were illegally obtained at this point, but uh, that wouldn't surprise me. When we get to the end of this, we'll, we'll know the answer. Can we get to um, how he kind of got away, how he actually escaped to that portion of... I was hoping you were going to yeah. avoid that. <laughs> get there eventually, right? <laughs> um. Yeah, uh, we're going we're gonna to provide you with a, with a video. Uh, I saw it this morning for the first time, and uh, it appears as if uh, two deputies uh, uh, took Mr. Tucker in a back patrol car, just like anyone else, into the basement of the jail. When they placed him in the patrol car, he had complained about a, uh, a back injury that, that he had and uh, that he couldn't put his arms uh, behind him to a, a full degree. So they used double handcuffs so that uh, he would have some, uh, uh, his arms would not be bent as much in, into the back. Uh, he complained that he was uh, nauseated when they got into the basement and that he was uh, uh, possibly going to uh, throw up, and the officers then rolled the window down so that he could have air. They then placed themselves at the rear of a patrol car where they're uh, on their computers in the tr on the deck lid at the back of the car, and probably uh, uh, typing the report for booking uh, because they couldn't just take him straight into jail because they have to lock down the jail because he's a prior deputy sheriff, and that takes some time. So while they were waiting for that, they were typing this report. Uh, and uh, I think this is indicative of what we, the world we live in today, uh, and I think you'll see in the video there's a focus on what they're doing, and it appears that, uh, that uh, they could not see uh, uh, what else was occurring. And if you, in the video you will see him reach outside of the, of the window, reach down and unlock or open the door from the outside. Uh, he slowly exits the car and you can see him uh, at that point, uh, not in handcuffs, and places something in his pocket. Uh, he then uh, very calmly walks away and walks up the ramp, and then in the second video you can see where he gets outside and he takes off running. How did he get out of the handcuffs? It's a great question. I suspect, and I don't know this, but I suspect that uh, he may have been equipped with a handcuff. If you look at the video, it appears he's putting something in his pocket. I can't tell what it is. It could be a key, it could be the handcuffs uh, themselves. I, I really don't know. Was he searched, and if he was searched, was he searched appropriately before he was placed in the back of the car? We have not, I have not gotten to the point where I've read reports on the administrative aspect. There, there's two, two things going on here. One is uh, uh, what the officers did or did not do wrong, and uh, their culpability, and that's an administrative investigation that we will look at, and that would be part of that. And of course, you all know that I can't talk about an administrative investigation. Uh, but that, that will be forthcoming, there's no question. The, uh, the, uh, the question that um, uh, really is in, in the forefront of my mind is why weren't you paying attention to uh, this officer, I mean to this uh, uh, suspect that was in a car. And uh, it's not uncommon for us to double handcuff, it's not uncommon for us to roll a window down so that a suspect can get air. Uh, but it is uncommon to not pay attention to that suspect, and so we'll have to look at that and see um, if they if they have any culpability. So you're telling me you don't think he did anything wrong by rolling down the window? That's common. Yes, it's very common. Yeah. It's not against procedure. Sometimes, sometimes you leave the air conditioning car running and the air conditioning on. Uh, sometimes, uh, when you're uh, uh, 
have to leave someone in the car for a, a period of time and they're overheating or they're, they're uh, sick to their stomach, yeah, you can roll the window down in the back to where they can get air. But you stand at the window and, and watch your suspect. How, How far away is the window crack? rolled down? Uh, far enough for him to reach his arms out and unlock the door. Um, what's the status of those two deputies now? Are they still with the department, suspended? The, we are in the middle of that investigation. We're just uh, starting it, and as of right now, I have no uh, indication that they're going to be taken off duty. You were saying there was there's procedure for when you're dealing with uh, cops, law enforcement, work, when bringing them in as suspects, um, like you have to lock down yes. the jail. Um, should there have been a different procedure for him? He had been arrested a day before. You guys saw the weapons that were there. I know it, it is, you guys do it routinely, put down the windows, put them in double handcuffs, but was it almost kind of infection? Well, obviously, we're looking in, in hindsight, and uh, hindsight's 2020, of course. We should have done something differently. Um, but sometimes things happen, and, and you know we'll have to look at this. We will do a thorough investigation. Um, a review board will look at the actions of the officers and make a determination whether uh, they violated policies of this department, and if so, that there will be consequences, and if not, there won't be. What is your candid reaction on looking at that video? Is it? Do you think that that procedure was not followed in this case? You can't make this stuff up. You just can't. Uh, this is this is something where uh, I know that the officers were doing their job. And the last thing they thought that the, the, this suspect was going to get out of the car and run away. Uh, he's in handcuffs. He can't open it from the inside. Uh, but I think there's a, a, a apparently uh, or an apparent um, focus on this computer that they're working on and not a focus on the suspect. And obviously that turned out to be a problem. How often do people escape from patrol cars? Do you know when the last time that was? We've had them in the field get out of a car before, uh, but this is really, really unusual. This is not the norm. This is not common by any stretch of the imagination. So there are people, there are viewers who say, what a coincidence, the one person who's been in the force for 18, 19 years gets out. People think he has friends in the, in the department. Any indication that that could be the case? Uh, that's a great question, but I have no indication that, uh, uh, and knowing the members of this department, uh, this is not a deputy sheriff that we're chasing. This is a crankster. This is someone that is abusing uh, drugs and is a danger to the citizens that we serve, and in fact, a danger to the deputy sheriffs, a danger to the people who work in this office. So um, I don't uh, for a second believe that that occurred, and, uh, and I have not had one, one person uh, ask me if that, if that was a possibility. But uh, it is a great question, and it's not something that we've ignored. Can you release the deputies' names who were involved in this escape? We can. Um, you, we had a previous estimate from Ray, 5 to 20 minutes. Can you narrow that down? How long was it before they realized he was gone? The best information I have at this point is 15 minutes. They did not know that he had um, uh, left the, the basement. Uh, in fact, in the middle of this, uh, a sergeant came out and communicated with the, uh, the suspect to ask him if he was going to post bail or not uh, so that when they went in into the jail to book him, it, it would be easier to, through the booking process. Uh, when that sergeant went back into the, into the jail, the, uh, uh, the deputies then went to get their suspect and he, uh, a short time later he was not there. So but between when he was gone, literally what you see in the video, get out of the vehicle, and when they realized it was 15 minutes before they... That's the best information I have, yes. How does that make you feel? Well, when you watch the video, uh, you know, from a law enforcement standpoint, you want to scream at the video, wake up, look to your right. But um, it, it is what it is, and uh, uh, things happen, and, you know, we're all human beings. Not making an excuse for what occurred, because I don't know, I don't have all the facts or the details yet. Uh, but I do know that we have to look at how this occurred and make sure that this is not able to happen again. What is the uh, interdepartmental work going on now as far as the BPD and the CHP and, and other agencies now, your second kind of, I don't want to say this is a sense similar to the manhunt earlier in the summer, but another sort of, I guess, very dangerous and formidable suspect I guess you have to chase now. Well, as I said earlier, we're using every resource that we have available uh, inside the department, outside the department. Uh, our priority is to, uh, to get this suspect back into custody. Do you think he's still downtown? I have no idea at this point. When you say double handcuffs, does that mean he has to pick two separate locks if he had a, if he had a no, key? No, you, you, uh, 
I, I think probably the two handcuffs were uh, made them longer, if that makes sense to you. And so you just you still have one here and one here. Um, Sheriff, you said that, that you were looking into you know the search procedure. If he had a handcuff key, was did he have anything else potentially on him? Was his wallet taken away from him? Does he have access to ATM, cash, things like that? We certainly are looking at every aspect of this case uh, to try and find him, and uh, to go into tactics and and how we're doing that would be inappropriate. But do you know if he had his wallet still on him? Was it taken away from him? I have no idea. Is anyone else being investigated at this time? Not to my knowledge. Can you talk about, to, to what degree can you talk about his approved leave? Uh, all we've been led to believe so far is that it's an approved leave and that you guys can't talk about it any further. Well, I think you all know there's there's uh, uh, different mechanisms that, uh, that officers can be paid while they're not at work. And that's about as far as I can go. Um, uh, he's not on paid administrative leave. And uh, you know your research, I'll be able to help you get where you need to be. Was he being paid taxpayer money? Of course, and, you know, all money that anybody gets is taxpayer money. Yes. Sheriff, can you, I, I know you don't necessarily want to entirely elaborate, but what are the procedures when you're talking about locking down the jail facility? You clear out the booking area because law enforcement's coming in. Is that a special circumstance? Explain yeah. to me what what kind of was that a delay and a factor and reason why he was yeah, still there? Frequently, there? not frequently, but uh, too frequently. Uh, an officer might be arrested from uh, the California Department of Corrections, from Bakersfield Police Department, from Shafter, from the Sheriff's Office for driving under the influence or another uh, crime. And when they're booked in the jail, you, you don't want other inmates around knowing that this is an officer coming in because you have a responsibility to keep that, uh, that suspect safe while they're in your custody. So the, the booking area is locked down, meaning no one's there except the officers and that are arresting and the officers are booking. And so does anyone monitor this surveillance video or is it just seen later? Was someone there monitoring the garage with their surveillance? No, it's, it, is, it was after. We do not have any, it's not live uh, to uh, someone that's watching. Talk to us about him in general. He is a 19 year veteran in your department. He's had training through your department. He knows how grid searches work. How dangerous is he? Is it significantly more dangerous than chasing your average person out there? Well, that the fact that he worked here is not what makes him more dangerous. His actions so far and what's been in his possession so far uh, make him extremely dangerous. Uh, it's not normal to point a gun at, at young people. Uh, it's not normal for a, a police officer to use methamphetamine. Uh, it's None of that's normal. So this is uh, a behavior that obviously there's some mental illness involved with maybe drug induced but uh, but there's obviously something that's altered the uh, actions of this person over the past however long we don't know but we do know it's not normal behavior and it makes him very dangerous did but, you know him before this well I know all of them but I don't know him I'm not wasn't personal you never had conversations with him not or? that I'm aware of but sheriff I mean Christopher Dora comes to mind when you think of recent cases. An LAPD officer who had an agenda, who wanted to come back and attack the department. He knew where they were looking, how they would go. He knew how to elude them. Is that a concern in this case? He knows where you might be looking for him. Well, I think even in the Dora case, that may have been blown a little bit out of proportion. Yes, being a police officer, you have some idea of, of how we do investigations. But unless you've worked in the Special Enforcement Division, you don't really know how, uh, what we're capable of doing, how we're capable of doing it. So I don't think that he has the insight to uh, this entire organization and our method of operation. But with that said, of course, he has some information because he was a deputy here for 19 years. He's suicidal, you said, as well. I, we've seen deputies kind of posted outside. Do you have people stepping up security outside headquarters? Do you have reason to believe you may target other deputies, other law enforcement? Well, uh, you know, the, it's... Uh, important that we protect employees in this organization, but but that's not our focus. Our focus is protecting the community um, until we can get this suspect in custody. Do you think he's potentially going to target? Do you have any reason to believe he's targeting you guys or targeting someone else specific in the community? I have no information that he's targeting anyone, uh, but I don't want to look backwards and say that we didn't look at every aspect of what we're doing in this investigation. So we're trying to cover uh, as many bases as we possibly can. Uh, to ensure the, the safety of the employees, safety of the public. 
Why was he employed in the sheriff's department after being arrested multiple times before he became a sheriff's deputy? I don't know that he was arrested multiple times before he became a sheriff's deputy. He was. And I don't know that uh, uh, the circumstances of his background, the, uh, this 19 years ago, um, you know, I, probably nobody here made the decision to hire or not hire him, so I can't really answer your question. How do you not know that? Don't you guys do background checks? Well, there's, there's 1,300 employees, and uh, I promise you, I don't know 1,300 backgrounds. Um, but someone in the department had to have known that. 19 years ago, the crew that worked in, in uh, doing backgrounds and personnel is not the same crew by any stretch of the imagination. So uh, it would be a little bit unfair to ask someone back in personnel, why did we hire him 19 years ago? Because they can't give me the answer. So is that is that against policy to hire someone that has been arrested before? No. Are you if that were the case, um, we would we, our pool to hire would be very, very small because some people get arrested for minor offenses when they're 15, 16 years old, uh, even 20, 21 years old, and 10 years later uh, they tr apply for a law enforcement agency. It's a factor, but it's not necessarily a disqualifying factor. Then why are the standards at my new station to be hired higher than the standards to be at Kern County Sheriff's Deputy? You probably need to ask your, uh, your station manager that question. I don't know. What's your search program? You, if you had to hire 1,300 people from this community, I promise you your standard might be a little different. Yes? Sorry, what is your search perimeter right now? What are you looking at? Uh, we're not going to talk about our tactics and, and, and where we're searching. Do you believe he is still in Kern County at this point? Again, I'm not going to talk about what we think or what we know. Yes. As far as covering the community and make sure, making sure they're safe, are you adding more patrol to the areas where he was previously arrested? I know residents there were nervous he would return. We are uh, we're doing the best that we can to protect the community that we serve, and uh, we have done some things differently, but again, I'm not going to go into tactics. You were um, not in town when this actually happened. What were your first thoughts when you heard about this? Well, I was on my way back, and, okay. and uh, uh, my first thoughts were that uh, this is, uh, you can't make this stuff up, and uh, it's sad that someone that, in, that uh, works in a law enforcement agency chooses to use a drug that we all know is so destructive and destroys so many lives, it makes no logical sense why some women do that. And we're coming off this huge manhunt, the 17 one, day one in Weldon. Um, are resources still high? I know a lot of money was used towards that. Do we still, are, we, are those still available, the resources um, monetarily? Um, are, is that available right now? Well, I don't know if, what you mean if they're available. We're not, we're not not doing something because we don't have the money. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, this is an all out search for uh, for Mr. Tucker and, and we will stay with us till we find him. Are there any indications that he used drugs while he was a sheriff's deputy? I have no indication of that. Um, so that wouldn't be a reason to be put on leave. He would be fired if that was the case. Well, I, I can't answer your question because that would be an administrative investigation and, and uh, which I don't really know the, re the uh, content of, but if I did, I couldn't talk to you about it. Can someone be put on leave for using drugs? Yes. <laughs> Uh, how many people have you added on to the force? Can you kind of speak to how much, you know, beefed up protection, if you will, this community is under now? I, I can tell you that we have changed uh, the, the, the uh, resources that we use uh, to more than what we were before, but I can't tell you how we're doing it. Uh, how do you think this is going to end? I mean, you said he's well, suicidal. Well, I, I hope that he comes to a... a, a reasonable mindset where he realizes he needs help and we really do want to to, uh, to get him in, into custody get him the help that he needs and make sure that nobody in our community is hurt how did you find out about this i know you mentioned you were on your way back how did you find out and when at about 1 30 uh, local time yesterday morning um one of the questions that was asked previously uh was that there was, appeared to be a two hour gap between when the public was notified and the media was notified <clears throat> and when this individual apparently escaped. Um, can you explain that gap in notification? Well, we, you know, that's the number one priority is trying to get him back into custody. Uh, uh, we use Nexel, uh, people you know, that want to, uh, uh, to know what's going on right now, if they join Nexel.com, uh, they, they will get the same uh, feedback and the same release that you get. And so uh, we're encouraging people to use that. But the suggestion being that this happened at 945, I, I understand he, he was gone at around 945, and the press release didn't come out until 1120, for instance, on Nixle. Is that, in your mind, unusual? Should it have happened sooner? 
I haven't looked at that aspect yet, but that certainly we'll look at and see if, if we could have done it quicker. Uh, sometimes you, you have to be careful that you don't put the wrong information out and that you don't get in a hurry. As you well know, sometimes the press pushes to get in more information from us when before we're ready to give it because we don't want to give wrong, bad information. Do you think he has uh, survival training or do you think he's actually being held along the way? Well, survival training is a, a, a term that's pretty generic. I, I think that he has the ability to uh, uh, elude and I think that uh, he has spent time in areas, um, you know, in, in the mountains. So we certainly look at all that and uh, we're doing as much research as we can to find out how much he might uh, know and how, what he might be capable of. Has the department been in contact with Deputy Tucker's family or ex-wife? Well, we've been in contact with everyone that we can think of that will help us catch Mr. Tucker. And, uh, uh, you know, that's we're not going to ignore contacting someone because uh, he might be related to him. From what we understand, his kids and his wife are afraid. Do they have reason to be? I think uh, until we're, he's in custody, I think we all uh, experience that, that anxiety level that because we don't know what he's capable of. Do they have reason to be specific? You have to ask them. I, you know, I, uh, I, I can't. I'm, I'm not going to plant a seed of fear in, into someone that may or may not have it. Are you asking for any other law enforcement agencies to help you in this search? Uh, we are using uh, more resources than we normally would, and where we're getting those and how we're deploying those is is a, one of our tactical uh, things that we just simply don't talk about. Have you guys opened up the comm center, the emergency comm center? The, uh, the DOC? Mm -hmm. Yes, we have. Okay. You mentioned he had the debt court. Do you have a list of the other guns that he had there for the second arrest? I, I do not have a list of those. Sheriff, can you just also where the, the storage unit is? We understand somewhere in the Northwest. Uh, I have no idea where it's at. Okay. Um, any idea if there were any cases that he worked on that may have been compromised? I have no indication of any case that he might have been involved in that's compromised. He has not uh, obviously been uh, with us for uh, a year now and uh, before that there were, I think there was some break in service as well. Have you guys had any indications or sightings of him? I mean we heard of a man being taken at gunpoint. Um, it looked like a felony traffic stop almost on Nile Street. We also heard uh, shortly sometime perhaps after he went missing San Joaquin Hospital had some kind of scare. I have no reports of any sightings or uh, those could be independent cases of uh, uh, another investigation. I don't know. Okay. So do you believe someone is helping him? Uh, it's a great question. Uh, generally, uh, uh, people that run in those circles uh, uh, can't stay out of custody very long. This is someone that was arrested twice in the same week when we weren't looking for him. Uh, so now I think uh, uh, chances of him staying out of custody are, are, are less because of the behavior that draws law enforcement attention. And uh, we just certainly hope that uh, we can get him into custody before somebody uh, gets hurt. Does the department know how long he's been using drugs? I, I don't have any idea how long he's been using drugs. Does the department know how long he's been using drugs? I don't have any idea how long he's been using drugs. I am the department. Sheriff, can you, when we talked about this with pensions, can you fire somebody without giving notice or do you have to give them an advance notice? I think you need to do some research on administrative investigations, but uh, with that said, mm -hmm. uh, no, I cannot. Uh, if you saw the case back east where uh, the de sheriff's deputy was terminated, I don't know how they do that, but California doesn't work that way. So it's what, like a 30 day notice? It's, it's, I can, if you do your research on, yeah. on uh, California law, you, you'll discover how long it takes. There seems to be a gap between when he was arrested at the park and when he arrived at the jail. Uh, is it usually about an hour and a half, two hours to get someone that far? Well, it depends on what, what uh, they were doing at the scene because if he has a vehicle, uh, sometimes you're conducting a search and that search can take a lengthy period of time. So I would, I would say that is not an abnormal length of time uh, and on the circumstances of this case uh, especially. Anybody else?